Here's our final example of integration using partial fraction decomposition. And for this one, we're going to do it the same way. We'll start by factoring the denominator to simplify this rational function into smaller partial fractions. So we want to start by factoring 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x. First, we notice that there's an x common to all of these terms. But once we pull that out, we need to factor this remaining quadratic. Because of a, the 2 in front of x squared, this one looks a little bit harder to factor. And if you ever get stuck, don't forget you can always apply the quadratic formula and then work backwards from the answers to figure out what the individual factors need to be. But for now, notice that one of these is going to be 2x and one's going to be x. And we need to figure out what we're missing to make this simplify to 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. If you've forgotten how to do these, if you haven't done one of these in a while, remember that we're going to start similarly. Those two unknown values need to multiply to negative 2. And there's only a few possibilities for that. We could have positive 1 and negative 2, or positive 2 and negative 1, and then we have two places to put those. So there's really four possibilities. We could have the positive 2 first, then the negative 1, or the negative 1, then the positive 2, or the negative 2, positive 1, positive 1, negative 2. So there's really four possibilities, and you could play around with these to figure out which one you should use. But it turns out this is 2x minus 1 and x plus 2. That's the correct version that equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. So this factoring is a little bit trickier. You need to go back a little bit to your algebra and figure it out, but a little trial and error gets you there pretty easily. So then we need to set up our partial fractions. This complicated looking rational function. We now know the denominator is x times 2x minus 1 times x plus 2. So we can set up one partial fraction for each of those. There are three linear terms, no repetition, so each one gets its own partial fraction. And now, when we go to solve for a, b, and c, because there's no repetition, it'll actually work out pretty easily. Because now when we multiply both sides by that denominator, the only thing left on the left side is the numerator. And on the right side, when we multiply, we know that this denominator equals x times 2x minus 1 times x plus 2. So on the first term, the x cancels, leaving just a times 2x minus 1 times x plus 2. On the second term, the 2x minus 1 cancels, leaving b times x times x plus 2. And on the third term, the x plus 2 cancels, leaving c times x times 2x minus 1. Now, when we go to solve for a, b, and c, we can plug in helpful values of x. x equals 0 will make several of the terms be 0. x equals negative 2 will be helpful. And then x equals 1 half will make the 2x minus 1 terms drop off. For that one, we'll have to deal with fractions a little bit, but it's not too bad. So when x equals 0, the left-hand side just leaves us with negative 1. And on the right hand side, the terms with x in them disappear. So we'll just have a times negative 1 times positive 2. So negative 2a equals negative 1, or a equals 1 half. When we plug in negative 2, the left hand side simplifies to negative 1, because we have 4 minus 4 minus 1. And then on the right hand side, anything that has an x plus 2 in it, meaning those first two terms, will disappear. So we'll just have c 
times negative two times two times negative two minus one or negative five. So negative one equals 10 times C or C equals negative one tenth. And then lastly, when X equals one half, if we plug that on the left side, we'll have one fourth plus one minus one. So just one fourth. And then on the right side, anything that has two X minus one in it will disappear, which just leaves the middle term B times one half times five halves. So we have B times five fourths equals one fourth. And you can solve by multiplying both sides by four fifths to get B equals one fifth. So we now know A, B, and C, which means that the integral of x squared plus 2x minus 1 over 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x is equal to the integral of a over x, 1 half over x, plus b over 2x minus 1, plus c over x plus 2. And then each of these requires one quick step of integration. So the 1 half times 1 over x gives us 1 half natural log of x. And then the 1 fifth over 2x minus 1 gives us 1 fifth times 1 half natural log of 2x minus 1. Again, using absolute values. So really we can write that as 1 tenth times the natural log of 2x minus 1. The 1 fifth came from the coefficient that was already there, and the 1 half came out of the u substitution process. Again, if you need to pause and do the u substitution in detail, go ahead and do that. But if not, we can skip through the steps. And lastly, we'll have 1 tenth, and this one the u substitution doesn't have any surprises, so we just have natural log of x plus 2, and then plus c at the end. So there's the final answer, having gone through it. This one combines a lot of the ideas we've seen in earlier examples, and if you can do this one, you should be pretty well set to do the other examples as well.